Welcome back to another Top 10 Countdown here on Boxing Legends TV. Today, we'll be taking a look at some of the finest rising stars in the ever-brightening heavyweight division. It's never easy to compile a list like this with so many young guys trying to make a name for themselves in the money division. But thankfully, for you guys watching at home, this is a part of the sport we pay thorough attention to all year round. So without any further ado, let's get straight to number 10. Izu Ogona is the only fighter listed today with a loss on his record, but it was his brutal, valiant effort against Dominic Brazil that proved this kid can be a serious problem when competing at the top of his game. Izu is a Polish boxer from a Nigerian descent that became a university graduate at a young age and quickly turned his knowledge for physical education into the fighting art. He started out as a kickboxer and became the European champion in no time. But while watching back some of his fights, it's clear to see he was a specialist with his hands. And I guess that's why he took up pro boxing in 2010. After a dozen fights in Poland, his talent was recognized by the well-renowned trainer Kevin Barry in New Zealand, who brought Izu over to share some sparring sessions with the rising star Joseph Parker. You know, the thing is that, you know, uh, I've, been, I've been working hard and um, I've been working with Kev uh, for a year now and I believe that um, with every tra training time I'm getting better and better. Barry soon took over Izu's full coach, where he went on to feature him regularly on Parker's undercards. Uh, it said that Izu has a significant... Oh! oh boy, yeah. He's out. Izu has obvious power, but his stamina seems to be his biggest flaw. Brazil showed a big heart to battle through their contest, but in the end, it seemed Izu's gas tank became his downfall. Izu hasn't fought since the Brazil fight in 2017, so it's anyone's guess as to how he responds from a pretty grueling first defeat. Rostislav Plechko is one of the most aggressive fighters that you'll see in the ring, period. The 29-year-old heavyweight from Russia has had 12 fights, 12 wins, with 12 knockouts, all in the first round. Победа Ростислава, но тот венгер сломался после первой атаки. The thing that separates Plechko from the other fighters on the list is the fact his boxing technique isn't exactly something you'd expect from an Eastern European fighter. He's wild, sloppy, unorthodox as hell, but as soon as that bell rings, you better be prepared for an almighty hailstorm as he runs at you with the intention to kill. Rostislava is the lack of weight. A very powerful hit, Levsha, immediately hit the opponent and... I personally think Plechko will be heavily avoided for a while. He might have to pay some of those known journeymen a few extra bucks to get in the ring with him until he gets himself into a ranked position. Overall, I'd say he's got good potential, but there is a reason why no one in boxing fights with this type of aggressiveness. Normally, you get found out by the first decent counterpuncher you meet, but only time will tell. Who else remembers when the 2014 New York Golden Gloves champion George Arias turned pro a couple years back? This guy raised a few hairs on people's necks with his slick Muhammad Ali type style in the ring. Both hands word in the street is. Like the head movement on Arias. Side to side work from Arias. You know, I'm looking his eye. And another jab hurts. Kaysen, same as in round one. And he hits the deck. Kaysen goes down in round two. George Arias, the power puncher. In 2016, however, he seems to have fallen off the edge of the earth as he disappeared off the scene completely. I know I wasn't the only one checking his box rec every week to see if he had a new fight announced. But thankfully, in 2017, he returned to the ring with five solid outings and now has a record of 10-0 with six knockouts. As fun as George is to watch, I have to point out he's only six foot, which puts him in the midget category amongst today's giants. 
He is a pretty strong kid for his size, but will he be able to compete at world level in the coming years? My gut reaction tells me he won't, but I'll certainly be keeping my eye on him from here on. Personally, I've never been a fan of overweight fighters. The way I see it, if boxing is your profession, you have a duty to train hard and replace those flabby areas with solid muscle. But Poland's own Adam Kownacki just appears to keep improving from fight to fight despite his weight yo-yoing like crazy. They don't see what they need Two to see. Two uppercuts and a right hand. There it is. And there it is. He goes. In 2017, however, Konachki got himself into a career best weight at 240 pounds and brutally punished his fellow Polish teammate, Arthur Spilka, in his best win to date. But he's going to throw a lot of punches as he tries to smother Spilka. Controlling the distance this round to me. Right hand connects by Kornowski. It's the same way with his hands down, right here. Konachki was rightfully the underdog going into this one. Spilka gave Deontay Wilder a serious run for his money in his previous outing before being stopped in the 10th. Konachki took it a step further and got rid of him inside four. Take away from that what you will, but this big boy earned himself a spot in two of the four sanctioning body rankings and will likely be in a top matchup in 2018. Rising prospect Joe Joyce has a unique set of skills that might just put him above everyone else on this list when it comes to ring generalship. Six onwards, this is where the game plan really kicks in for them to take over, control, stay in top form, and continue to use the versatility of strikes, angles, and footwork. The 3-0, all knockouts heavyweight for London, made a huge statement when he entered the pro game last year with a dominant performance over Ian Lewis. Beyond him, that's the position. Oh. For me, Joyce was robbed of a gold medal in the 2016 Rio Games after a controversial decision to Tony Yoka, but thankfully still got a chance to shine as a pro as David Hay quickly signed him up under his Ringstar promotional company. I want to try to you know, put you in the ring with guys that you know, British fighters don't fight in the first, say, five fights. Joyce isn't the most exciting fighter to watch. He doesn't really sit on his punches and often throws shots without much conviction, but this kid can box. We know every important is to stop. Oh! He's six foot six and can move like a middleweight for the most part with excellent footwork and jab and seems to be learning as the fights pass. He is currently scheduled to face the former title challenger and tough man Derek Jusora on May 5th, so look out for that as it's guaranteed to let us know just where Joyce fits in this division. I personally think we'll see him at title level late next year, assuming his promoter can make the right fights happen along the way. Daniel Dubois is a young 20-year-old heavyweight getting a ton of media attention for all the right reasons. And what did you think of Daniel for a 19-year-old? I thought he was fantastic. He reminded me of myself when I was 19, very tall and big and strong and ambitious. You know, he's a good kid, he's one for the future for sure. Dubois started boxing at a young age and enjoyed lots of success as an amateur, being victorious in 70 of his 75 fights and winning various tournaments along the way. As a pro, it's been nothing but knockouts with seven straight over the last year and only one man seeing the third round. He's looking carefully and now, oh, that's surely it. Massive right hand and it is all over in the first round. I do think that we're starting to see slight flaws in his game as he's progressed through the British domestic scene. He looks a little slow, defensively inept at times, but he certainly makes up for it with his God-given raw power. As I said earlier, Dubois is only 20 years old and has never ending time to keep slowly improving and learn his craft, which I hope his promoter Frank Warren understands, because I think we'd see the Dubois train crash quickly if he was to meet young game challengers at this time in his career. Without throwing too much shade on the young man, Dubois is another great addition to the heavyweight division, and I have no doubt we'll see him in some big fights down the line. So Dodge is about to go the same way, massive right hand. This one will shock a few people, but yes, we felt the need to include a cruiserweight on the list. How do you feel? I feel. I'm very feel. Are you ready to fight? Yes, I'm ready. 
for those of you that don't know, Alexander Rusik is undoubtedly one of the finest stars in boxing today. He is currently a unified champion and heading into the biggest fight of his career against Murat Gassiev, where one man will emerge as the undisputed champion of the division. But sadly for Usyk, there's something about the cruiserweight division that, for whatever reason, seems to fail when it comes to attracting the casual fans. So a good old-fashioned leap up in weight seems nothing but inevitable in the future. Usyk himself has confirmed he'll be moving up very soon, and I guess the big question is, can he deal with the giants at the top? My guess would be yes and no. I think he could blitz a lot of the top contenders with ease. After all, he has already beaten guys like Joe Joyce and the Amateurs, where he pretty much schooled them alongside everyone else in 2013, where it was reported he only lost one round the entire year. Crazy, I know, but this guy has a unique set of skills similar to Lomachenko, where he pivots his feet and throws a million punches. He's never going to be a KO merchant at heavyweight, but it'll be really interesting to see how the legs of Anthony Joshua or Deontay Wilder would deal with him. After all, Wilder has clearly shown flaws against a man with a similar style in Arthur Spilka a little while back, and I can tell you this, Spilka is no Usyk. But I guess this is all smoke and mirrors, as Usyk heads into his bout with Gassiev. I wouldn't exactly put my life on him to win that one, so maybe we could shed a little more light on the situation once the World Boxing Super Series finishes. Thanks for watching, fight fans. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like and be sure to subscribe if you're new around here. Until next time, this is Boxing Legends TV, signing off.